guys, it's Luminaire 180 from the Cultured Primate, and they're bringing you another episode of Sucking Bad. Now this time around, I thought the perfect game to play would be The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Um, I personally really, really like this game. Uh, it does have some issues that kind of make it hard for a newcomer to come into the game. It is hard to jump onto, but I'm going to go ahead and show you some gameplay of the game. And obviously I'm going to suck at it because that's what makes the series. But at the same time, I'm going to try and give you guys some pointers that might help you out if you're a newcomer into this series. You don't have to play the other two Witcher games to get into this one. It's a perfectly good standalone game. And it's definitely one of those games where you get your money's worth because you get hours of gameplay out of this one. Alright, so now without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. To the game and get started. What the? Already? What the freak? Well, it is sucking bad, isn't it? Well, let's go ahead and load up and get started. Alright, first things first, one of the biggest tips that I have is anytime you come to a new village, make sure you go to these notice boards. That's where you're going to get all your quests, or the majority of them anyways. So you make sure you pick up all of those now one of those type of quests that you may encounter this is a pretty basic one uh, you can actually find hidden spots on your map that they, they call these places of power now these are really important you want to stop and get these because they actually give you your ability points that you could spend on all your different abilities and, and attacks so you make sure you get these also when you draw energy from these points of power they will give you a temporary buff, so they're actually very good for, you know, buffing up your abilities before you go into a battle. So if you know a certain monster's weak against an ability, find a place of power for that ability and power it up. It'll be very useful in the combat. And sometimes you do have some monsters guarding them, so you want to go ahead and take care of that. They're usually not too tough. Another one is you're going to encounter random bandit camps in the field um, pretty much when you pass these bandits they're gonna attack you. so you can go ahead and raid the camp kill everybody light motherfuckers on fire chop their heads off you know sneak up on anybody who might be unsuspecting like this guy right here and oh that was a nice one so pretty much once you kill all the bandits you could go ahead and raid their camp Go through the rummage through their crap, loot, loot, and loot some more. This game's all about looting. Loot everything that you find. You may actually get some cool gear out of it. In fact, most of your gear is gonna come from side quests that you do. See, now that's a little bit better. It looks better than that atrocity that I was wearing. Not as nice as the original Witcher gear, but it'll have to do for the stats. Come on, come okay. And besides bandit caps, sometimes you may have hidden treasure or guarded treasure. In this particular case, there's some hidden treasure here. Well, let's take care of this guy real fast and I'll show you. If you see on my map there, it says the treasure is hidden in this area. So now if we rummage through this guy's pockets and you find a key here. And we could actually use this key to get this hidden treasure. Now I want to try and keep all of this as spoiler free as possible. So I'm only doing side quests. This particular quest actually is a chain quest. It gives you another one. That will actually take you to another location so you can find more treasure. We can skip forward to that. After killing the bandits outside of this building... As you can see, I find some a hidden, it's like a broken boards here on the floor. They go to a hidden room. Now you actually have an ability that comes in very handy. It's kind of like a force push. It's like a telekinetic blast. Very useful for things like this if you want to blow down doors or break through broken walls, stuff like that. 
And then you just come in here, loot all the treasure. As you see that glowing box there, that's what we came for. If we go ahead and collect the treasure out of that one, it go ahead, it completes that side quest. And I actually got manuscripts for a special oil. So you will find like uh, plans for better uh, armor, better weapons, and different alchemy and and materials that you could build that will come in very handy from all these side quests. So doing the side quest is actually pretty helpful. This is another type of side quest here. You'll find on the map, you'll see these monster heads. Basically what they are is monster nests. So these guys here, this is a group of ghouls. And once I slay them and get them out of the way, as you can see, early game my combat wasn't all that great. But we improvise. I'll show you guys later on in the video what actual combat should look like. I mean, I'm still, like I said, I'm not that great at the game. I'm just getting started now. I've never played Witcher before, but I really do enjoy the game. I love the lore. I like their take on the monsters and stuff, and I like the way you hunt them. And It's just a really, really cool concept. And I'm a huge fan of the Monster Hunter series, so... Naturally, anything hunting monsters is just my cup of tea. So once you go ahead and you, you slay all the monsters guarding this nest, like so, by decapitation. Now what you're going to do is you just go ahead and destroy the nest. And you'll collect the experience and you can go ahead and loot the nest, actually. Always loot, like I said, everywhere. Even if you think you're robbing somebody's house, loot. Don't worry about looting, you know, you're, you're going to have a lot of items. There are places where you could stash all your extra crap. What you're going to want to do, if you see at the top of the screen, you actually do have a weight requirement. If you go over that, your character will slow down and get sluggish. So that was actually the tavern in the first village where you can find your first stash and dump off all your extra random crap. Now as far as my combat tips go, I'm going to show you a few of my really bad fails in combat when I was first starting. Well, basically you're not going to want to do any of what I'm doing. One thing I learned from this battle here was take out the archers first. The archers will destroy you if you don't get rid of them first in a battle. These bandits, there had to have been like three archers hidden in these woods and I just couldn't find them. They destroyed me. Another thing, as you can see, I keep doing the dodge roll. Don't do that. It wastes a lot of stamina. It'll take longer for you to get your abilities back. Learn how to sidestep instead. Use the dodge roll only when you absolutely can't get away from an attack with a sidestep. But the sidestep is just more efficient. Spam your signs also. Here's another one of me failing miserably. I really hate these freaking fish dudes. They piss me off so much. And then, you know, the terrain just wasn't having it, so it just kept screwing me up. Get off of me, you bastard. Come on, man. Get off of me, man. This is aggravating. Yeah, so, so pay attention to your terrain because your terrain will really mess you up. You know, sometimes you could actually use it to your advantage. In this case, no. Oh, look, guys. It's a cute little herd of deer. I wonder where they're going. This must be a place of happiness. Oh look, I discovered a place of power, so yeah, let's stop and get that real quick. Those are very important. Look, holy crap. Hey, Mr. Bear. What the? Dude, I just shot him in the face between the eyes and he took one damage. Holy crap. That bear just fucked me up. Oh shit. Dude. This bear is fucking beast, man. He's destroying me. Holy crap. Like one swipe takes a third of my freaking health. 
back, foul beast. Oh, God. What a fail. Mauled by a bear. Ah, but every once in a while you have cool things like this. You get rewarded, you know. You're going to die a lot, obviously. But sometimes you have little battle strings like this that are really, really rewarding. And they're just awesome. And you just want to keep playing. Yeah! <laughs> That is so fucking awesome, dude. That guy's head just flew right off. Alright, so now I want to get into, basically, the meat and the potatoes of the game. Which are the Witcher contracts. Hunting the monsters. Now, I if you don't want any spoilers as far as the monsters go, you might want to stop the video right here. But this is actually one of the monsters early on in the game. Uh, it's maybe the third Witcher contract that you do besides the first one, which is actually part of the tutorial of the game. And this was actually very similar to that one, so you don't really have to worry about too much spoilers. Uh, but basically, you're going to want to go to the person that gives you the Witcher contract. He's kind of going to give you the story of the monster, the attack, what happened, and maybe give you some clues as to what the hell you're dealing with. This game is basically, you're going to do your investigation first before you even fight the monster, because you need to prepare for the battle. This game is all about preparation. You want to make sure you have the right materials for the job, the right tools to kill the monster. So now, as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and barter with him and try and get a little bit more cash than what he's giving me, tough, which is another really cool thing about this game. It does have... The interaction is very interactive. You can actually kind of haggle your price as far as what your contracts go. So as you can see, I'm going to shoot a little higher than what he's giving me. I'm going to ask him for 300. His annoyance meter starts to increase a little bit. You don't want that to fill up because then you'll lose the contract. So I'm going to kind of go, oh, I'll meet you halfway, buddy, all right? 275, all right? Is that good enough? Yeah, risking your neck for us. All right, he bites. So we'll go ahead with that. At least we're getting a little bit more money than what we would have gotten before. Take a look at this shrieker. Anyone around here know more about so that's beast. that's a really good way to make a little bit of extra cash. Don't just accept Those what they're giving you. Try colors. and shoot a little bit harder. Saw the arrow with his own eyes, but you might find the lad Okay, cap. now that we got the contract, we need to find out what the hell we're dealing with. So he's gonna give me some information about the first sighting of the monster and where I could go to investigate. Now before I go, I'm going to go ahead and meditate. This is a tool that I found out a little bit later into the game. You can actually meditate and it will not only restore your health, but if you have alcohol, some type of strong alcohol in your inventory, it will actually restore all of your potions and alchemy items as well. So that's very important. Tracks are irregular here. Monster must have started staggering. Was wounded most likely. So as you can see, we're investigating the first area of sighting of the monster. Let's try and figure out what the hell it is that we're blood. dealing with. What exactly are we fighting? Monster blood. With our Witcher vision, I'm just going to go ahead and follow this blood trail. And it should take me to the monster's den. Feathers. Arrows down the list of suspects. Alright, so it looks like we figured it out. It looks like it's a cockatrice. A uh, cockatrice is like kind of like a rooster dragon that breathes fire and something like that. So this is his cave here. Now that we know what we're dealing with, we need to be ready for this fight. So one thing that's very important in this game is your bestiary. You want to look in here for tips on how to kill this thing. It's going to give you the weaknesses of the monster. And as you can see, it's weak against a certain sign, a certain bomb, and a certain type of sword oil. So I'm going to go into my inventory, make sure that I have the Draconid oil on my sword, because it will do increased damage to him since he is a Draconoid. And I'm going to make sure that I have my Grape Shot bombs, since he's weak against those also. Okay, and I also have some food items, and I have some potions to boost my attack up. So I'm... I'm ready for this battle pretty much, so let's go ahead and we're going to do this, and I'm going to show you what the battle between the cockatrice sh 
should run like. Now just keep in mind, I'm a brand new player to this. This is the beginning of the game. I just started. So if you guys got any tips for me as far as the battle goes, drop them down in the comments. I, I need as much help in this game as I can get. But I basically just want to show any newcomers what these Witcher contracts and these monster combat battles kind of go, you know, how they how they roll. So it looks like we bombed, we smoked him out, and now he's taken off. So I'm going to go ahead and go after him. Alright, so we got our big dragon rooster motherfucker, and he is fucking kicking our ass. Alright, threw a grape shot bomb in his face. Now, as you can see, I sidestep a lot more now. I pop in my potions, all my potions. You have your toxicity gauge, that green gauge with the skull on it. You could pop potions until that's full. Which your potions are supposed to be poisonous, basically. Uh, any normal human drinks them, it'll kill them. Witchers can tolerate these up to a certain extent, so as you can see, I popped three Thunderbolt Potions, which increased my attack 20% each. So I'm using that against this guy. I'm spamming my Agni sign, which is the fire that you see. You know, that's a really good, you know, like, it gives me a little bit of range and it's good chip damage, so I spam it every chance I get. The crossbow is useful for knocking things out of the, out of the air, as you can see. It's not very effective on the ground, it doesn't do that much damage, but when something is swimming or flying, it does some pretty damn good damage. Alright, so we're going to try some another Grape Shot Bomb. I think I have one more here, let's go ahead and use that on him. That's another one of his weaknesses. So pretty much, you just want to keep moving, keep dodging, get your hits in when you can, use everything that you have that weakens the monster. As you can see, he's an ugly motherfucker, and we need to fucking kill his ass. And I don't know if you noticed, but as my health starts depleting, I'm, I, I'm eating my bread. I have my, my food item there, and I keep eating it. Every time my, my, my life is dropping, I'm eating while I'm going in the battle. You can actually eat as much as you like in the battle. You'll see a little meter pop up that says Vitality increasing, and then it'll go away once you're done eating the bread. So you want to make sure that you're always popping food so your life doesn't drop because these monsters are going to chip away at you hard. And then you just keep sticking and moving and get your hits in. As you can see I landed a couple of heavy blows there. I'm going to back out a little bit because this guy's hits hurt. Just chip away at him. When you're fighting, always hold down the parry button. In this case, on the PlayStation 4, it's the L2 button. Always have your parry button held down. What that'll do is it'll automatically block any incoming attacks. There are some attacks that will penetrate through it, so you do want to stay dodging, stay moving, but always holding that parry button because it will block a lot of incoming attacks. Come on, dude, die. You're so close to fucking dying. Just die, dude. Get the hell off of me. So hopefully some of these combat tips will help you guys out. There's some, you know, it's some of the stuff that I learned the hard way. I had a lot of trouble getting used to the combat in this game. Because the combat is... It's, I want to say that it's sluggish, but it's not really, it's just very different from any other game I've ever played, so it's, it's kind of hard to get used to. But once you get the hang of it, and make sure you have your materials and you're prepared, the game is actually very fun, very rewarding. That's right, motherfucker. Die. You're down. So let's go ahead and take our proof that we killed this guy. Greetings. And then take it back to the guy who gave us the contract so we could get our monies.
Shrieker won't trouble you anymore. Thank you, Master Witcher. Your reward ain't much, but as they say, take care of the pennies. Hell no, I'm not letting you keep the money. I Good. worked hard for that crap. Any problems in the future, you keep me in mind. And one thing that's really cool is when you beat these Witcher battles, you actually get to keep the head of the monster. It's like a trophy that you get for winning. And when you equip it, hanging from your saddlebag, it will actually give you bonuses. Like this one gives you a 10% chance to dismember, which is pretty freaking cool buff. And it looks awesome as hell hanging from your horse. So that, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that was Witcher 3. I kind of showed you the basics and the different type of quests you might encounter. Um, if I do get a chance, I may make another video about this game if I get more into it. Uh, but definitely check out the game. It's well worth the money. I love how the developers are giving you pretty much all the DLC for the game for free and not charging you like most game companies do. And it's a very expansive game, used hundreds of hours of gameplay in this one. Also, go ahead and check out our website, theculturedprimate.com. We're not just a YouTube channel, we do have articles and reviews. Go ahead and check those out. Check out our shows, Battle for the Brew and Sucking Bad, which you just watched an episode of. And check out some of our other primates. We got BG Aku and G-Man doing some other cool stuff. And me, this is Luminaire180, out.